Welcome, everybody. We're going to get started. Thank you so much for being at your Art Gallery of Ontario. When people come to be with us and be with artists and be with great art, this institution comes alive. So thank you so much for being here and bringing your institution to life. It means a lot to us. And welcome. Uh, there are very few moments in my time at the Art Gallery of Ontario where a moment has been as resonant and meaningful as tonight, which is to say uh, we have the great privilege of having one of our greatest artists of our time be with us, at least online, uh, and I'm so pleased that Ai Weiwei is with us today. So um, I have some questions for him. Uh, some of you who might know me know that I never follow a script, so he'll be surprised because I probably won't ask the questions he's expecting me to ask. But uh, let me just say that if you haven't had a chance to see the exhibition, uh, it uh, rewards many visits, and I hope that you will come back and spend time thinking about uh, Ai Weiwei's production. fellow on the left needs to be introduced, but the fellow on the right is our wonderful ambassador in Beijing, Guy Saint-Jacques, and I want to say, Ambassador, you've been a wonderful, wonderful help to us. <laughs> so some of you may not know that it is about 8 o'clock in the morning in Beijing. Uh, the ambassador sent a car to pick up. Ai Weiwei from his studio, got up early, put on a jacket and tie just for us, and Ambassador, you've done so much to help us present this evening flawlessly. Thank you again for your real support. I do have some questions uh, for Weiwei, and uh, do your thing. Tell us however you want to answer these questions and you're comfortable with, but I'm going to push you a bit on some questions around freedom and expression and your sense of isolation or connectedness to the world. And I thought maybe the place I would start is to ask you, what does it mean when an artist can't travel with his work? What does it mean to you? Um, hello. First, I have to thank um, people who gave me this opportunity to to speak out, to to tell my story, and uh, this is a, a a big effort from the uh, Matthew uh, Museum uh, part, also from the ambassador. And uh, as an artist, I. I do artworks, and uh, through, through hello, uh, through artworks, I express myself. Um, but as a today's artist, I use a very uh, mixed uh, media, which uh, include documentary films. Uh, research, social research, and uh, blog writings or, or Twitter write, writings. My blog has been shut down for past three, four years. So I I try to reach audience and to to show my my concept and ideas through different kind of forms. And uh, of course, I cannot travel um, at the current situation. My passport is taken away by authority with no clear explanation about the 
why and how long it will not return back to me. So my my travel is very limited. Uh, now I I can travel in China, but with uh, with uh, secret police watching or uh, follows. And for artists cannot really have a direct communication. It's uh, with uh, the audience of the work, or to to exp to give some explanation, and it's uh, it's quite difficult. And uh, also the more difficult is I cannot see how how people respond or 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 criticize the work. And uh, but through today's technology, especially what happens today. Uh, and we we can we we still have some opportunity to to have communications, and uh, which which may make it much better. That's why uh, we we have to thank for the people who make made this possible. And do you feel connected to the world, or do you feel isolated? I I feel connect to the world because I'm more uh, living in a virtual uh, world. I get on Twitter. I still can get on Twitter, and uh, which Twitter is forbidden in China, but it's through special kind uh, uh, technical help, I can get on Twitter and also can get on uh, Skype. Um, so daily. I spend hours on on internet to communicate with uh, people, student, and uh, and the people who uh, fight for freedom of speech or human rights. And in that sense, I feel very connected to the people. And uh, but uh, if thinking about without this technology, then I probably will be dead or seemingly dead a long time ago because nobody knows what's going on. And uh, once you don't know it, you don't care because uh, you know you you can't care something you don't know. So so that's why China still have put up a very strong censorship on the internet. Mm -hmm. And in this condition that you're describing, tell us something about how you make your work. How is the work that we see in Toronto or that we see in Venice or elsewhere, how is it realized? Uh, my work, um, it often, uh, a major work often take years to to come up to from uh, to first to conceptualize it, then to find a possible uh, medium and uh, to to organize people working on it, and to then the last thing is to plan the exhibition show uh, exhibition, which my exhibition can never happen in China. So uh, mainly it happens in the outside of China. And uh, uh, for for example, the work uh, with this metal rebars, we call it a street. Its work uh, started from 2008 when we start to research the the names of the students who had uh, passed away through this. Uh, Disaster, and uh, we got very frustrated because the state would never give uh, a clear information about uh, who is dead and uh, and how many of them. So we once we started the research, we start to realize uh, there's so much. Uh, Tragedy behind those num just the simple numbers. So we made documentary films and made interviews of those uh, parents <coughs> who lost their children, which is over 5,000 of them. And uh, 
then I start to think maybe I have to find a way to 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 keep questioning the same condition to to memorize the life or respect those life and to refuse to forget and、uh, that's how this uh, this uh, metal uh, piece of work uh, uh, about rebars comes out. So we start to think to collect those rebars, but、uh, that's a very sensitive issue. We have to be do it in kind of secret way through agencies and、uh, volunteers to follow where all those.、Um, Disasters material went, and、uh, secretly bought it, and and、uh, sent it to Beijing, and they use、uh, factory workers to to straighten it one by one, piece by piece. It takes、uh, about a year and a half or two years just to to make all those uh, uh, twisted rebars from the. Ruins to to become straight again. So this work,、um, we have to do.、Uh, we we have to do it in some kind. Of,、um, we can never really announce it. We have to do it in a secret uh, uh, fashion, and also nobody understand why they are doing this because even. They see it. They don't know what's going on. You know why they have to do this. Until one day, I have a chance to show it. I can explain the story to the audience. So the journalist in me wants to ask you which secret project you're working on now. <laughs> um. Actually, my my existence is a secret to Chinese society, and、uh, you know my my name. Nobody can even criticize me on the papers. Even I consider as a threat to the society or dangerous to Chinese public. But、uh, they cannot criticize me because there is clear regulation. Nobody should talk about him, not to say anything good, but also more importantly, not to say anything bad about him. Because、uh, you know、uh, that's the that's very interesting to me, but、uh, that's why I I as a person I don't exist in this society. So whatever I I'm doing,、um, I'm doing too many things. It's even hard to 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 really describe. Like、uh, we we did the civilian cameras to show public what. You know my bedroom is or my working office is. Then, because I thought that's the intention of the the state to to know what this secret guy is doing, but after we did it within some hours, the state secret police called in and says you have to turn it off, shut it off. I said that is your intention because in front of my house is 15. Surveilling cameras around my living compound. So I said I can. I try to invite you to even more secret corners, like right above my bed, and、uh, so they can see every turns I made during the, my while I have dreams. So they they get very scared of that. They think this is、uh, this is too much. <laughs> so it's very hard to describe what is secret life. You know, if you open it too much, that's also become a, a, a very dangerous for for people. I wrote down a few words, and I thought maybe I just say a word and ask you to talk about what that word means to you. So my first word is exile. What does the word exile? What associations do you have? I exile. <clears throat> well,、uh, exile means put some some thing away and、uh, not not let that to be noticed or to to be、uh, 
a factor in in the society. And my father, as a poet, who has been exiled for twenty years, and I I grew up with、uh, that condition. So we lived uh, uh, in this uh, Xinjiang Gobi、uh, Desert area, and actually my home was uh, uh, lived underground. You know,、uh, a real underground. It's not a.、Uh, we we have to dig in a a a, a kind of like a hole and live in there for about five years. And、uh, that time, my father cannot、uh, not allowed to write poetry, and、uh, he's doing hard labor to clean the pub public toilet in a village. And I think the whole effort is to put him far away,、uh, distant from the center. And my condition today not to let me. Be on the internet is exact exile.、Uh, even I still live in Beijing, but uh, uh, the the disassociation with、uh, the surrounding, the the real life here,、um, is kind of like exile. My next word is community. When I say the word community, what is your association, and how would you talk about the idea of community?、Um, when we talk about community in China, it's it's almost doesn't exist because China is not a civil society. There's no media you can really.、Um, Really associate yourself to share the same feeling or same concerns with a group of people. There's no real religious group or or non-governmental organizations、uh, can can legally exist. Or if it exists, it's always part of the government、uh, interfering. So the, the sense of con community really get lost, and in past、uh, decade, maybe almost a quarter of Chinese、uh, from the farming area become a, 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 a city, a, a city. Uh, to work in the city, or、uh, to immigrants to to the、uh, urban situation. So everybody in the city they have been moved、uh, to new location because the rebuild. So we we don't have so much association with the people who we growing up with, or the people or teacher we. Teach told us in the in the earlier school or or classmate, so everybody has been dis disassociated with、uh, with the memory or with、uh, the 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 neighborhood, and、uh, this is a, a a new phenomenon to China. And in the next twenty years, more people will be immigrant to the city. So when they, you have no possibility to 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 be freely associated with people, and which is guaranteed by institution, you you can freely associate with people. But in the reality, even today we can. Well, I if I put announcement that said,、uh, okay, I will have dinner. If anybody on the Twitter want to come, then there will be big problem because all the secret police either will stop me、uh, before I get out. Or or they have to size the whole so dinner place, so that happens to many people. Of course, not happen to me now because、uh, they kind of lose the control of、uh, of me. But、uh, it happened to me before. I I announced a party in in Shanghai before they destroy my studio. I just made such a simple announcement that I will have a party there, 
a party, you know, to to eat, not party to do anything else. <laughs> and uh, there's over thousands of people registered, just write us letters, they will be there. Then we realize there's uh, people will, friend, uh, will come from 20 some uh, province, states, or come to, to the party, which is also scary to me because uh, then I realize there will be over 10,000 people participate in this uh, party. We are going to uh, serve some uh, river uh, crabs. So, of course, police uh, come to me and said, uh, we're begging you not to go. I said, uh, you can't because I already announced it. I'm uh, the host, there's a guest. So the police said, why don't you tell them we already put you under some kind of uh, temporary uh, arrestment, arrest. I said, if you didn't do it, also I cannot make that announcement. So they said, okay, then we have to really officially arrest you for <laughs> some 70 hours. Because, uh, you know, then that's my first detention, which is about 70 some hours in my house. So, so I cannot go to, to serve the, uh, as a host. And the, but the problem is, even when I was not there, about 800 people still come to the party because we have um, our, our studio still have people taking care of them and they have they had a great time. Can you say something about the spirit of generosity? Because it seems to me that in a lot of the work you do with others, you reach out and give them an opportunity to be part of your world. So say something about how you approach the idea of generosity? Well, I, I never forget that we are, we are growing up in a communist society. And uh, when, we, when we grew up, the main, um, the main inf uh, inference on us is um, everything belongs to, to the common, you know, commonwealth or the, everything should be shared. So that was the education. It's not exactly the situation t China today. And uh, since Deng Xiaoping announced let somebody get in, become a rich first, then, then from then people start uh, stop to giving or sharing. And uh, we can see Chinese Red Cross get very little uh, donations in past years because people just don't trust it. And uh, for me, I think uh, if I continue to do art, uh, the only attraction to me is it can be shared, can be shared with other people, with the people who not necessarily know me but can, can try to figure out why this guy is doing that and uh, and uh, what is the message about? So I think uh, you know the the most powerful sensitivity we have sense we have is uh, it's about sharing. You know, love is about sharing. Also, hate is also about sharing. And uh, so we we I I I am attracted to making art still. Is because I can I can communicate and can you know express myself through those uh, uh, actions. If I were to ask somebody about your position on China, some people would say to me, "Ai Weiwei rejects China, repudiates its values, distances himself from the idea of China." And if I stop somebody else, that person might say to me, Ai Weiwei loves China and feels deeply tied to its values, but questions the way in which they are being expressed. What would you say about your feelings about the idea of China? Uh, 
First, I have to ask myself, what is China? You know, when we talk about China, what is uh, what is the content? My father has been pictured as, or has been remembered. You know, still the the people mainstream talk about him as the most patriotic poet. Even the leaders in China, they memorize his sentence about China. You know, they can they talk in public um, speeches. Just you know, memorize, repeat his sentence because he is pictured as the most patriotic poet. And I grew up in Basin, and uh, I see what uh, what kind of image he has for China, and what what is the problem relate to to this kind of understanding. And uh, I have been outside in New York for about 12 years. Also, I, I have some understanding of uh, uh, Western culture, art, and, uh, and uh, social political practice. So my understanding of China is still uh, a place which trying to struggle itself uh, from a, a very ancient society into a contemporary, a modern one. And uh, doing that, China first have to survive economically. That's what uh, all the leaders in China think about, um, to, to, to regain this kind of confidence and uh, to have uh, uh, some kind of communication with the West to make people have a less uh, argument, but rather to to hope uh, and to to work together. And China made a, a lot of uh, progress in the past years, and we all can see that, and uh, it's quite a, a miracle. And uh, but at the same time, China has some uh, issues which they which really really bothers them they cannot really uh, really openly talk about for past 6 years china you know has been uh, you know the, the government has been in control for 6 years but they never can hold up a public election and they cannot do in the past they cannot do it now and they have no schedule for the future they, they just say China, you know, this Western idea of a democracy is not working in China. But what they are using today, everything, every technology, every even method or, or logic is from the West. And they are benefited from the West, from this kind of using or learning. But they totally refuse to have this so-called uh, freedom of speech. They control all the information. They actually brainwashes people through schools uh, and the universities. They limit those young people's uh, possibility to get a free information, to make their own judgment, to become passionate, to make their own choice, to be, to be creative to be a real uh, individual. So the question then become, if China still can meet this kind of competition in the international, uh, you know, in today's contemporary life. So by make this kind of achievement, they sacrifice a lot, human rights and, uh, and the very basic uh, they they cannot even follow their own constitution. They cannot let people freely associate with each other. They cannot uh, really have an independent judicial system. And uh, this and this is too many more since they they just cr uh, clearly announce they cannot do. 
So then we ask, uh, how about the future? If a society refuses all those very common values, which every Western society thinking is essential uh, for the foundation of contemporary life, and China as a such a large state doesn't bear the responsibility or doesn't to share with that, that is a danger for me. That is not a, just a danger for China, but it's a danger for the world. And uh, because we cannot afford such huge nation and with such fast speed of growing and not to agree with all those very essential values. Can I take that answer and that space that you're in thinking about your country and t move it towards the production of your work as an artist? And maybe the way to do it is to ask you, you were in detention for 81 days for a set of beliefs that you held and still hold. How did that detention change your thinking about your art or even the artwork that you made? Um, I was detained for 81 days. And of course, during the detention it was a little bit hard because they, they tell me I will be sentenced for 13 years. And uh, I will never see my son for that long. And uh, I probably will not see my mom ever because she's quite uh, old. So that was diffi difficult moment. And uh, then I suddenly got released. And uh, I asked them, I said, why you detained me and why you released me? The, the both are very unclear because they never officially did it. It's everything done like Chinese way. So they think over, they said, I cannot answer your question, but I can tell you we always can detain you again, and we don't ever have to release you. That's that answer I remember so vividly. And uh, I, if I think about it, then I would think what kind of threat I would uh, be with them. You know, I always have to criticize myself to think, to stand on their way, to think about, you know, what I should change if that danger exists. So certain behaving I changed. I never really organized up a party again. I never really want to demonstrate in the major boulevard. Or I don't want to talk in the public about my opinions that much. But uh, I cannot change my belief. I told them clearly, even you just take me out and say, take put a bullet in my head today, I still cannot change my belief because that who I am. So I think they understand that part. So they they try not to bother me that much uh, now because you know they they kind of disappointed, but at the same time they understand this guy cannot be easily changed. So uh, toward my artworks, I I've been very careful actually. What I did is some responsibility. I think I owe people or public uh, some kind of uh, explanation, like uh, what we did before about earthquake, the students' uh, uh, problem, also about my my detention. I I have responsibility to tell people what happened, and. Uh, I try to become uh, so-called low-key or not to talk so much. So talk a moment about the idea, maybe I'm pulling this out in the wrong way, but the idea of protest. And I think about Sacred, your work at the Venice Biennale, and I think about your dumbass video that's gone around the world. And I wonder whether you would say that at the core of those works 
is the idea of protest. Um, I should say yes. Uh, but the protest, we look at the, in a more abstract uh, understanding because as any, uh, as a human being or as an individual, to announce your character or your, your private feeling is always a protest. Um, because that is something you have. So, so if any character and uh, to trying to uh, announce some kind of special condition or 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 any any unique uh, uh, thinking, I think that if the form always can be seen as a protest. But as an artist, I have a way to express, to use a medium to express myself. And, uh, you know, I have the voice. Even my music is terrible, but uh, still I have the voice. I have to even to, to practice it to understand that that's terrible. And, uh, you know, the, the world is not just full of a beautiful sound or beautiful voice. You know, I do have my my so not so pleasant uh, music there and uh, that's I think that's a sharing uh, uh, to the community and uh, to make people understand uh, what is there of course they have a choice not to come to the show or not come to this kind of meeting or re reject whatever they don't like but first they send has the right to be there and uh, then, then the will be the next will be the reaction to it. Thank you for that. So we're getting close to the end. Uh, I don't know whether that makes your heart beat faster because it's you've been very good to <laughs> us. But I do. That's very uh, big. I want to say that we do have a special guest with us tonight, the Right Honorable Adrian Clarkson, who a former Governor General of Canada. And I've asked her if she would ask you a question. So we're going to turn the camera so you can see Adrian Clarkson and uh, if you would ask the question. Hello, Ai Weiwei. It is a great honor to be in contact with you directly, having admired your work for many years. As you can see, I also am Chinese. Um, what I, uh, what I wonder, because you are a great artist, is how do you think your art would be different if you had not lived under the conditions that you have lived under almost all your life, first in exile with your father, uh, then being uh, constricted within your own country? Do you think your voice and the things that you would be showing would be different? Would you still be traveling the world giving the finger to monuments? Would there, be other, would there be other things that you would be criticizing in the world for us? What we see is what you are able to do in China. Would you be able to do that for us in the rest of the world? Uh, thank you. I, um, I, I... I will be very different if I have, been, have not been through what uh, I have been through. I think everybody will be very different if we don't, uh, if we don't face in the, the, the surroundings. And I remember when I was 10 years old, once I, you know, we lived in this Gobi Desert and my father is, has to do those hard labors which is very difficult. And the school is also, besides, we have to memorize Chairman Mao's slogans. We, we basically, there's not much study there. So I, I, I told my father I want to be a shipper to go after the lambs. And uh, you know, in our village, there's about 400 lambs. And uh, my father thinks about a week to tell me maybe you should stay in school. 
that time I was 10 years old. And uh, I thanked him to help me to make that decision because uh, otherwise I would never criticize China. I would, I would just count those uh, lambs and to make sure there's no wolf would take them away. And uh, today, of course, I am being put as a quite well-known artist. I have a chance to speak for the people who is unfortunate. They will never have a chance to question any authority besides to count their lambs or to, you know, just just daily struggle would just make them would never even to read a paper or to give out any opinion about, you know, or or too much problem or too big society or or a great nation. So, but as artists, I have the liberty to criticize. I have the liberty to, to question in sense. And I think that I feel very fortunate. Doesn't matter whatever will happen to me, I still feel very fortunate. Still, you know, that uh, may answer your question. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. So I think we're coming to the end. I do want to say that the project at the Archive of Ontario was the result of many people coming together. I want to acknowledge again the ambassador, Ambassador Guy Saint-Jacques. What I perhaps failed to make clear is that this interview has taken place at the Canadian Embassy, which is an indication of the ambassador's commitment to this presentation. Thank you again, Ambassador, for everything that you've done. I want to acknowledge a number of people who have helped uh, make this project possible. Emmanuel Gattuso and Alan Slate, Francis and Eleanor Shen, the Hal Jackman Foundation, the Delaney Family Foundation, the Donner Canadian Foundation, Partners in Art, Tamara Rebanks and James Appleyard, the Globe and Mail, Larry Warsh, and AW Asia and Eb and Zane and Eb and Jane Zeidler, I have to say, all played an important role in making this exhibition happen. And that commitment and advocacy for Ai Weiwei's project is deeply meaningful. Uh, for those of you who have the energy, I hope you'll stay late tonight. It is part of our first Thursday. Uh, it's a great night to celebrate Ai Weiwei. I'm going to ask in a moment uh, for the cameras to be turned around so you can all express your appreciation to Ai Weiwei, but I might just say, uh, Right Honorable Adrian Clarkson, thank you for being here. It means a lot to us. Kristen Wan Tam is also here. She's the counselor who helped us enormously with the Zodiac heads at uh, Nathan Phillips Square. So stay late. Come back every first Thursday. Uh, but for now, we're going to turn the camera around and Ai Weiwei, we're just going to say to you, thank you for being a great artist and sharing your work with us so generously. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I think that's it. Very good. Goodbye. Bye for now.